Godolphin and their Dali studs breed a huge amount of racehorses around the world. Some are destined for racetrack stardom and a place at stud, and others, such as geldings or those who never race, still need a home for life. In the first part of our Godolphin Lifetime Care features, we look at their fabulous foal handling, setting these horses up to excel at any activity right through their lives. John, here at Godolphin Woodlands, this is where the foals take their first breath, they see the world for the first time. It's a really important part of a thoroughbred's early formation, isn't it? Yeah, it is, Caroline. Like, we, we've got a very long term view about, we take a very long term view about what's happening with the, the foals. They're born here. Ultimately, um, we're trying to prepare them for a life in racing. Um, but we've also got a, a, a longer term view that after racing and, and even the horses that don't make it on the racetrack, the long term view is that they will have a second career in dressage or show jumping or even showing. And, and there's also, you know, there's an area of, they're, they're a great companion. So they're doing a lot of work for people from a psychological point of view. They're a great companion and, and they can be sort of great company. We'll have a story going forwards about their pre-training and breaking in and so forth. But, you know, you do see so many of, of the people that are working here have a real love of the horse. They're not, you're not putting out, you know, machines. You're putting out fabulous athletes that hopefully will win on the track. But as you said, it is, it is a whole of life sort of outlook. Well, it is. It's a full circle of life. As we, it's like we're very fortunate within the Godolphin organisation, we breed to race and then sort of race to breed. So essentially, we breed the horses here, and we hope that all of them will go on to the race course. So you know, it's like part of your family. You lose them for a little while, and then this time of year during the breeding season, we've just had a heap of race fillies retire, come off the track, and and they've come back into into onto the farms again. So the people haven't seen them for about four or five years. Yeah. And that's the whole cycle of life. So they do become part of your family and the, and the people that work with them are so passionate about it. Um, and you have to be because you're working with them day in, day out. And, and then you lose them for a little while and that's, you know, some people that's always sort of hard sometimes. <laughs> but then they come back again and then they have babies. And, you know, a lot of people that are working here may have worked with their mothers in training and then they've seen them now retire, then have babies the next year and then work with their babies. So it's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle um, and it's an ongoing sort of lifetime commitment. So then what's the next stage with this little fellow? Because he's getting a bit cheeky, you know, he knows he's the first born, as we said, so he, he doesn't have anyone else to play rough and tumble with. But what do you do now with him as far as your handling? We'll do a proper session when we'll put a head collar on him and, and get him used to putting a head collar on and we'll sort of rub him all over so he's used to being touched by humans and mm -hmm. pick the feet up. So when we're doing farrier work, it's easier and it just makes the whole process easier for them. Less stressful for them, less stressful for people. So you, you want to throw them to learn as much as you can in that period of time. So short little stints but more frequent. And then of course the weaning process where they're taken away from their mothers. There's an incredible routine about that as well, isn't there? To keep them calm and safe. Look, it's a tricky time. Again, I keep relating it back to human sort of terminology, but it's like leaving home for the first time. Um, and that can be quite stressful, even for the cheeky ones. You know, the independent ones, sometimes they're the worst. So it's important that they're living in a group together with their mates and they play with them and, and we've got some of the old retired mares that they, they come in um, and they become the nannies, they become the, the sort of, they're teaching the kids how to, to act, to come up for a feed, how to behave and they'll, they'll sort of discipline them if they need it and they'll comfort them if they need it. So they're, I suppose they're, they're they are like nannies yeah. and, um, and they're great. I was really intrigued watching the way that you get them to come in so they're easy to be handled. As they're getting bigger, these weanlings, they're almost yearlings when we were filming them. So tell me about the process of, of actually bringing them in. They've got a separate yard um, and that's great handling for them and a great education. It's important that they remain as horses um, but also when, they, when we need to do something with them that they respect that. So they, they come in every day, they, they come in and they get fed in the morning, they get fed in the afternoon and they're quite relaxed about that because they've been in there before, they've got food in there so and then if we've got a farrier coming we can, we can just do the farrier work and they're already in, in the pen and if we've got a parade coming up or if we, we need to do any work with them they're already in there and they're in a relaxed environment that they're comfortable with and then we let them back out and they go out and they play like and become horses again. You can actually individualise your feed and individualise what each horse needs so yeah, there might be one horse needs a little extra pat just to keep him sort of mind on the job 
um, and then some just need to have that bit of independence as well. So you can kind of make it, make it independent for each individual horse. So that's the, the, the beauty of it. It really is a, a great thing for humans, this lifestyle, isn't it? To be raising these beautifully educated young horses. There's a lot going for it. Yeah, no, look, it, it is a lifestyle. I mean, and, and you don't come into it unless you, you enjoy this lifestyle. And you've got a, a job, and we've all got a job to to educate the horses and it's not just the career in the race track, it's after that as well. But it's so important that they're well mannered and well behaved and that takes professional staff and, and, and we teach the staff as well, all the younger generation coming through. It's so important that we provide a, a safe workplace for them and also give them an education. So it is like going to university. You get the best of both worlds, you know, they're working with their passion and mm -hmm. working with horses, but they're also getting a qualification and getting paid. It's, it's great for younger people to experience that and, and people that at a later time in their life want to come back into it again. And I see a lot of equestrian people that, you know, where they show jump or do dressage or show their own horses, but they work as, as work riders or as breakers or pre-trainers. Are we bridging a bit of that divide between the equestrian world and the racing industry? We definitely are. And I think, look, the thoroughbred industry, and, and rightly, and so we should be, is opening that up and, and making sure we're, we're working in that space because they're completely interlinked. A great dressage rider is a great horse person and that's what we need. And a lot of those dressage riders and one day event, three day eventers, they are now people that break horses in. Some of them can actually go do track work in the morning, work in an office through the day, and then on the weekends go and do the three day event. It's all interlinked and a lot of time, hopefully, they're doing it with a thoroughbred horse that's come off the track. But who wouldn't want to live somewhere like this? Helping educate the next generation of, you know, race horses and equine athletes. It's just a beautiful life. So, and you can live on farm. Yeah, no, no, I'm very fortunate, like extremely fortunate that we can live here. We've got a great lifestyle. We work with beautiful animals every day and you know we can raise our kids and raise our families here as well. So, you know, it's it's a fantastic industry to be involved in.